Hello everyone. Welcome back our Class B and C31803 site investigation. Today we continue our class on groundwater control by exclusion techniques. Let's go, groundwater control by exclusion techniques. The aim of groundwater control by exclusion is to prevent groundwater from entering the working area, exclusion techniques. A. Methods where every low permeability discrete wall or barrier is physically inserted or constructed in the ground. For example sheet filling. B. Methods which reduce the permeability of the in situ ground. For example grouting methods, artificial ground freezing. C. Methods which use a fluid pressure in confined chambers such as tunnels. For example compressed air. Principal methods for groundwater control by exclusion. A. Displacement Barriers 1. Steel Sheet Pilling Open excavations in most soils, but obstructions such as boulders or timber box may impede installation. Form permanent cut-off, or used as temporary cut-off with piled removed at end of construction. Can support the sides of the excavation with suitable propping. Vibration and noise of driving may be unacceptable on some sites but silent methods are available. Relatively cheap. 2. Vibrated beam wall. Open excavations in silts and sand. Will not support the soil. Permanent. A vibrating H pile is driven into the ground and then removed. As it is removed, grout is injected through nozzles at the toe of the pile to form a thin, low permeability membrane. Rapid installation. Relatively cheap but costs increase greatly with depth. B. Excavated Barriers 1. Slurry Trench Cut-Off Wall Using Bentonite Open excavation in silts, sand and gravels up to a permeability of about 5 times 10 power of negative 3 meter per second. Permanent. The slurry trench forms a low permeability curtain wall around the excavation. Quickly installed and relatively cheap but cost increase rapidly with depth. 2. Concrete diaphragm walls. Side walls of excavations and shafts in most soils and weak rocks. Permanent. Support the sides of the excavation and often from the side walls of the finished construction. Can be keyed into rock. Minimum noise and vibration. Uneconomical unless walls can be incorporated into permanent structure. 3. Board piles, secant and contiguous. As diaphragm walls, but penetration through boulders may be costly and difficult. Economic for temporary works use. Sealing between contiguous piles can be difficult, and additional grouting or sealing of joints may be necessary. See injection barriers. 1. Jet grouting. Open excavations in most soils and very weak rocks. Permanent typically forms a series of overlapping columns of soil, grout mixture. Inclined hole possible. Create large volumes of slurry. Relatively expensive. 2. Mix in place columns. Open excavations in most soils and very weak rocks. Permanent. Overlapping columns formed by in situ mixing of soil and injected grout using auger based. Produces little spoil. Less flexible than jet grouting. Relatively expansive. 3. Injection grouting using cementitious grouts. Tunnels and shafts in gravels and coarse sands, and fissured rocks. Permanent. The grout fills the pore spaces, preventing the flow of water through the soil. A comparatively thick zone needs to be treated to ensure a continuous barrier is formed. Multiple stages of treatment may be needed. 4. Injections grouting using chemical and solution grouts. Tunnels and shafts in medium sands, chemical grouts, fine sands and silts, resin grouts. As cementitious grouting, but materials, chemical and resin, can be expensive. Silty soils are difficult and treatment may be incomplete, particularly if more permeable laminations or lenses are present. Dethermal Barrier 1. Artificial ground freezing using liquid nitrogen. Tunnel and shafts. 
may not work if groundwater flow velocities are excessive, more than 2 meter per day for brine or more than 20 meter per day for liquid nitrogen. Temporary. A wall of frozen ground, a free zoo wall, is formed, which can support the side of the excavation as well as excluding groundwater. Liquid nitrogen is expensive but quick, brine is cheaper but slower. Liquid nitrogen is to be preferred if groundwater velocities are relatively high. Plant costs are relatively high, e-tunneling methods. 1. Compressed air. Confined chambers such as tunnels, sealed shafts and caissons. Temporary. Increased air pressure, up to 3.5 bars, raises poor water pressure in the soil around the chamber, reducing the hydraulic gradient and limiting groundwater inflow. Potential health hazards to workers. Air losses may be significant in high permeability soils. Uprunning and setup cost. 2. Earth Pressure Balance Tunnel Boring Machine, TBM. Tunnels is most soils and weak rocks. Temporary. The TBM excavates for the tunnel and supports the soil and excludes groundwater by maintaining as balancing fluid pressure in the plenum chamber immediately behind the cutting head. The fluid is a mixture of soil cuttings, groundwater and conditioning agents, such as polymer or bentonite muds. Setup and running costs may be high, groundwater control by exclusion using physical cutoff. A. Cut-off walls penetrate into a very low permeability stratum. B. Cut-off walls used in combination with dewatering methods. C. Cut-off walls used with a horizontal barrier to seal the base. Thank you for your attention. We have done in Chapter 5. Next class, we will continue on a new chapter. I hope you enjoyed it and gain a lot of knowledge in this chapter. Bye and take care. Stay at home. Stay safe.